Well, God bless you. Today is a fantastic day. Oh, hallelujah. We are here. I thank you for being here, that God is not finished with you yet. And I welcome you here today. Please like, share these messages, partner with us as the, as the Holy Spirit would lead you. And let's get started off in prayer. Father, today in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank you for this message. I thank you, Father, today that as we come forth boldly, we are tearing down the works of the enemy in this hour. I thank you, Father, that every word is led by you, filled with hope, peace, love, humility, compassion, and liberty. I thank you, Father, that they who have ears to hear, let them hear today and receive and go forth in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. I shared a message not too long ago about the plot against females. And in that message, we can go back into Genesis and see the, the plan that God has for humanity as well as the plan that the enemy has. Two are very opposite. God did not intend for there to be death. When I think about what life would be like today if we were in the Garden of Eden, could you just imagine what the air would, would smell like or what it would be to just inhale and, and have that air fill your lungs? Could you imagine just the beauty and the essence of all things that would be so pure? Well, everything that God created, the devil hates. And by the way, he hates you because you're a creation of God and in the, in the expression of love of God. And so as we begin to see the real, the real epidemic or the real plot, now we can begin to start to move spiritually to combat what it really is. Now, as I shared before, God hates women and females because they are the carrier of the seed. Now, men are the seed holders. Okay, so when we go into Genesis chapter 1, we'll be in Genesis 1. I'll show you a couple things in the beginning here. So we know that in Genesis 1, 27, that it tells us that so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God's creation was set. There is no confusion. Praise God that there were only men and women, male and female. Because could you, like today, could you imagine if you, if you are trying to date and find a spouse and now you learn that, oh, wait a minute, there's not just men and women. There's 89 or 97 other choices. If you live in the UK, there's 99 choices of gender. So how do you begin to know where to fill that out and what you are if you're not in here knowing what you are? And then how do you find a match for someone else that would also be in accordance with that and then to know what it would be that you would be procreating? Is that going to be like the hundredth gender? Are you the first one? You start to see how convoluted it gets, which is exactly the enemy's idea. To distort, to destroy, to kill, still destroy, to make a mockery of, to mimic, and to obliterate everything good that God created. So we see that God's goal with females is to just obliterate them. And I gave you all the list of the power fashion houses that people love to wear and boast about, whether they're, they're, they're Prada or Frada. They're, they're still boasting about all of these things. You can see it all over the internet. All the while, the, the, the models are not even women. And I'm not quite certain why women boast about wearing these when they make a mockery of, of them by removing them from even being a part of the society. So we know that the attack on women is very real. We know that the enemy went after Eve. Now, what's interesting about this in, in the garden, I want to take you to Genesis 2, starting in, and we'll start in, let's see here. I want to go into, into verse 15. 215 of Genesis. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Right there we see a few things. One, God created man with a purpose, number one. Number two, he gave him a position of authority. So God did this. And the Lord commanded the man saying, 
of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Notice that the command was given to the man, not the woman. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So he's giving him, this is, we might say prophecy, this is, if you do this, this is what will happen. See, a lot of times we might hear and then know, but we don't really know until we know. And so we see that God already instructed the man. And he said, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make an helpmate for him. What's interesting about this is in the book of Proverbs, verse uh, chapter 7, verse 4, we know that, that wisdom is our sister, but also in the Bible, it tells us that wisdom was there from the beginning. So God really was never alone. So he would know when he says it's not good for man to be alone. God knew why wisdom is a feminine spirit of God. So we then begin to see, okay, so God knew it wasn't good for man to be alone. So we knew what man needed. The enemy is going to try to take that away. So now we start to see, some might call it, you know, the, the block. <laughs> Men have this block thing. And, and so the enemy is going to come in and kind of enter in and, and take Eve. And move in a way where, where what God created, knowing that it was not good for man to be alone. Well, so the enemy is going to come in and with his own plan to take the woman away from what God ordained. So she's a victim, the enemy's sly, and Adam is ignorant. All right, so he wasn't, at, remember, he's in a place of authority in this, that God gave him the authority. So when you start to look at the structure we might say some call it the umbrella, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, husband, wife, children, pets, career. But a lot of times we have it, uh, career, materialism, uh, pets, wife, or actually, no, pets, mistress, wife, you know, it's all backwards. And then we wonder, well, why, why is anything happening in my life? Well, we're going to keep going. So he says, it would not be good that the man should be alone. I will make him and, and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So God said, Adam, you decree a thing. The pharmaceutical companies, they're decreeing a thing. We need to come back to decree a thing. He gave him the authority to decree this, right? So I'm, I'm still going to ask him when I get to heaven, did you get bored when you got to pugs? Like, what's up with the pug? Like, did you just get bored, dog, cat, pug? Like, we went from dinosaurs and Tyrannosaurus rex and rhinoceroses and all these things, and then we just get to dog. <laughs> did, did you, like, run out of Scrabble letters here, Adam? Like, what's up with this, right? So Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field, but for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of, the, one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I'm still not satisfied in my quest when people are talking about the pre-Adamite people that if if we know that Eve is the mother of all the living and that God created Adam and he was he he was the first creation how was there creation before Adam and I want to know how it would be that if Adam is the first one did did he have a belly button I'm still and I said this in another one of my other messages that I'm still curious walking through some of these things that, that people are wanting to bring forth because I'm not convinced of some things. But what we do know is this is that God created man. We know that God created man with the purpose. And we know that they were brought together. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cling unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, this man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we know that there's nothing shaming about being naked. But church won't tell you that, especially in the covenant of marriage. They want everybody to be shamed and living in such a shame of all these things that God created that are beautiful. 
Now, we know that the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field, which, which the Lord God had made, and he spoke to the woman. So the woman wasn't there when the command was given to God, by, or given to Adam, rather. So when we begin to see how, how the woman spoke to the serpent, what I'm always curious about this too is that, is this, is when we look at this examination here, check this out with me. The woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said that ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. What's interesting is that women on any given day use about 11,000 or speak about 11,000 words per day, while men are only at 4,000 words. So we start to see we got a lot of extra words in here, right? So now the enemy is just coaxing her to get her to talk. Here she is just talking, 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 talking. And then she saw, okay, so now we see all the advertisers today make everything look so much better than it really is, right? You see all these people and then you see them in real life and you're like, whoa snap on that right but here's here's the thing is that when they ate their eyes were open she gave it to him and he ate what i'm curious about and i've had conversations with people about this and understand where i'm going because this is really going to take us somewhere that 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 we know that women are blamed. We already get that. Women are ignorant. That we see it. all of this comes back to here. The blame against women inside the church, outside the church, hasn't ever stopped. And, and we need to stop it and we need to deal with the blame and break the generational curse of blame. Forgive Eve. Go back and forgive Eve because she made a mistake and forgive Adam because he didn't take care of her. Now, here's what's interesting. Have you ever gone somewhere with someone... And then not exactly been with them in that exact place. I'll give you an example. Conversation that I had with someone was about Genesis 3. And we're talking about Adam and Eve. And, and he pointed out, he said, let's say, and this could be, this could be anybody in any situation, that, that you go with someone to a clothing store. You're in the clothing store together, so it could be that you're in the garden together. But then maybe you go over to look at the shoes and whoever you're with is in another area of the store. So they're with you, but they're not there. And so, interesting concept, because they were both in the garden. So we may want to give some grace to Adam if we can come to a place that... He may not have known. Now, he was there and she ate, right? When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of, of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. But we don't know where he was. So she may not have even known what that was because she's just having the conversation with, with the Lord. We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Now, we might just then say, okay, so then did Adam give her all the full instruction of not that tree? We might be able to infer that, right? So we can start to see where all of our communication issues in relationships come right back down to here. Lack of clarity of speech, lack of full revelation that comes between two people when they're in agreement. So now we've got disagreement, dis discord, um, distance between them and God based upon what occurred. Through this, when God asks them, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? When we begin to see the downfall of this, you wouldn't know something unless you know it. And once there's a crossing over to know something, you can't unknow it. So it's a very dangerous game to walk across a boundary line or a ley line and think that there aren't consequences. So for Adam here, well, who told you? I saw, I saw eating of the tree where if I commanded. And the man said, the woman who thou gavest to be with me, she, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Now he ate, but of course here we see the blame of woman. Now, why is that a problem for man today? Because we see it play out today. 
we were seeing this whole situation be played out. And the Lord said unto the woman, what thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I ate. Well, yep. Here's what happened, God. Problem. And then the God dealt with the serpent. So what happened? The enemy came in and usurped the authority that the man had over the land, over the ground. The whole goal was now to subvert the covenant between the man and the woman and the covenant that Adam had with God. Now, I show you something in, let me see here. I think it's right here. Let me see. I want to find this real quick to show you something. It should be 18. Okay. 1837 of First Kings tells us this. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. We want to be turning our hearts back to the Lord. The Lord, God, wants a relationship with us. There was a covenant that Adam had with God that was broken when the enemy entered. How many marriages today are broken because the enemy entered and because men were not paying attention? Well, the plot is yes against women. I've already shared that. However, when the enemy's working to bring forth all of these other elements in, he's going to work to deny the seed that men are carriers of to be going to the seed carrier. So he's destroying the, the authority of man. As more women are rising up, taking positions of being men, we see that we're removing men equally as fast as we're removing women. Now, the removal of women is very different because it's causing men to be looking at, at ideologies of something that really isn't a real thing. And we know that the, that the movement to destroy the genders is a move to remove women. And when women stand up, then, of course, then they're not inclusive and they should be canceled. So we've got this, we've got this whole goal where, where the goal, as I told you before, was, was to isolate men isolate women, to dominate them, and then recreate, and then integrate. And if you go against it, then you deserve to be canceled. So God's all purpose was for a relationship. That was it. Adam and Eve won a covenant with God. Everything was blissful. The enemy came in to destroy the seed of all the future lineage. You can see Cain, and then you can see all the all those in the in the Canaanite bloodline that are into cannibalism and all of these these other elements of things that are bringing forth these atrocities on the earth. Now, what happens since this time? Since this time is that we see the family unit has been systematically on a decline, generation after generation after generation. If we stick closer to what we're seeing in America right now, it's happening so fast. The decline of the American family is made in China. <laughs> the American family is made in China. Hello, we, you can, the American economy made in China. I mean, you, you, off the backs of, of those the child laborers, we already know this. But when we're looking at the American ideology and the American family and the unit of it, the war against males is increasing at such a rate. And if you happen to be be one that is of a light color. Well, there is more hatred, animosity, and you should just repent. But I'm going to say this. Do not ever, regardless of what color God created you, do not ever apologize for the creation because that is a slap to God Almighty. Because those that are inferior and walk with an inferiority complex have an issue with that. That is their issue that they need to deal with their spirit of offense. But don't you ever apologize for being what and whom God God created you to be. They just canceled the author of the Dilbert cartoon because he said, we have such a problem and it can never be fixed, so move away from it. Well, he does not deserve to be white work or have, a, have anything now because he just should not, because his existence he needs to apologize for. People need to get into the Word of God and know what the Word of God says because the Word of God is very clear that I knew you before I formed you in the womb, number one, and God knows the time and place of ye shall live. And he also tells us this in the book of Acts. So, 
And there's a purpose for your very life. Whether or not people like it is irrelevant. God created you. When you know your identity in Christ Jesus, then you will know, okay, well, that's their issue. That is a created issue to keep people divided, to keep people hating, and many are falling for it. What does it look like as we're walking this out on this earth? It's looking like we're seeing the separation between men and women. We're seeing that that many women hate men, which is a ploy, and I shared about this before. So long as women come to a place of hating men, then guess what? It's real hard to come to a Savior when Jesus is a man, right? How are you going to come in the fullness of a relationship with the Holy Spirit, who is a gentle man? How are you going to really look at God with good thoughts if you hate men? Now, my issue, I never grew up having men issues. I just hated women because, well, I just had a lot of issues with women. But women are beautiful. And we need, to, we need to not just stick together only when it serves a political party purpose. That's all hogwash to get women to hate as well. So when we begin to walk forward, we have to recognize that the devil's whole intent is to destroy. So if he can reach the women and have the women be moved out of the way, and if we can have the women think, well, well, as my sociology teacher used to say to a class of, uh, there was what, 187 in our class, I was a sociology teacher who hated me, and I already knew that because I said, Adam, God created Adam for Eve, not for Steve. Well, you can, uh, I still have the documents of the, of the homework assignment that she said, who died and made you God? But she used to come into class and say, the only reason why men, women need vibrate, uh, need, need lawn, the only reason why women need men is because vibrators can't mow lawns. That was in 92. Professors were pushing that on, on women to not need men and for men to be looked at as nothing more than just that. So when we start to see the start to devalue the seed carrier and 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 the men is the carriers of the seed, but then the women is the carriers to birth the seed. We start to see where the enemy comes in to destroy. Now, thankfully, I wish I would have done more actually in college and, and filing claims against that particular professor, but I didn't in my ignorance and took some other things to task in that time. But what we're seeing now is that the devil hates family. He hates men and he hates women. And if he can target women and get men to hate women, he wins. If he gets women to hate men, he wins. Why? Because they won't get together. And I'll give you some examples of this. Single men right now are two times likely to die in five years after hearing or receiving any type of heart condition issues. Two, five times or two times as likely to die within five years. More single men are suffering mood disorders. 63% of men in, are, are in the bracket of 18 to 29 where they're just not interested. Compared to 34% of women that are single in ages 18 to 29. So the single people are less interested in relationships than ever before. It used to be that people would grow up, they would go to college, and then they would marry their college sweetheart, and then they would, they would leave the city and have kids in the suburbs and watch TV and go to bed every night and be miserable in their lives, as, as many of you probably have seen this generation's past. But they didn't know any better. Now... We're seeing that singleness is, is overwhelming the population. Now, 47% of men that are, that, that are 30 to 49 are single, compared to 21%. So, when we start to look at these demographics, it seems a little odd, right? But what's happening is this, is that men are choosing to be single for reasons that we need to be paying attention to. Because here's the offset is that the single men are more lonely, they have less friends, they have less purpose, they have less testosterone, they have their, the serotonin is depleting, they are more sexually uninvolved in healthy relationships, and the rate of pornography is on the increase. Now, why is this important? Because if you were to take all sales of American football, soccer, um, American soccer, but also international soccer, football. If you were to take hockey sales, baseball, all of NASCAR sales and all paraphernalia sold at all NASCAR races, all sales of jazz music, country music, rock music, R&B, and hip hop music, it still is not. All of those revenues combined are not more than the sales of pornography. 
Pornography is far beyond all the sales of all of those industries by billions. So what's happening is that is that men are turning more to pornography than ever before during lockdowns many many in in europe were given free access to pornography pornhub gave it away free so you could just go and watch and just sit there with yourself and just just enjoy your day i mean they call it different strokes remember that used to be a tv show well, not anymore. It means something different. So now when we're looking at all of these things, what's happening, and yes, women are watching pornography more. They're watching it for different reasons. They're watching it thinking that they're going to be outside of a romance element to it. So men are watching for the action and women are watching for the romance, much like we might see in traditional movies, except we have now have this, this other methodology that's occurring. But what's happening is this is that men are committing suicide at four times the rate of women. Women are graduating college at a 60% higher than men. So now we have women that are becoming the new men. And then on the flip side, women are mad that they can't find a date. Well, stop acting like the men that you want to be and act like a woman and you may not have that problem, right? Because if a man's going to date himself, well, he probably would fare better without you and save the money on a date and not have to listen to being nagged at all day. Just saying, right? And many men might be saying, oh, preach that, sister. But we have to really take a look at what's happening. Because, because as men are withdrawing from, from being caregivers and caretakers, we might say as head of the household, as they are saying, nah, I don't need that. Women are now taking over. And yes, there's a push of this. There's a push, especially in certain colors of men, to remove them and make them feel guilty and not hire them, which there are many more lawsuits about that. We like, we like quotas so long as it only works for certain types of people, right? But when we make it fair, then we don't like it so much anymore. Let's just call it what it is. It's hypocrite. It's hypocrisy. And it's unacceptable. So there's becoming less of a need for men. Why? Because the women can go to a sperm bank. What do they need a man for? If the women are already going to college and getting more degrees than men, they're making more money than men, what, what, what do they need a man for? We start to see what's happening. We start to see where the depravity is starting to settle in. Now, there's an offset too in society that says that ladies, you should only be marrying tall, dark, handsome with the, what one point two in the bank, and then if he's smart, he's got another four or five outside the bank, and he's in Cayman, and he's got this and that, and you know he's got to have a six pack because anybody that is not, oh honey, you just not worth that, and the only thing that you ever want for for dinner is reservations because it's only about you getting served. These are my students that have this ideology, by the way. Oh, Dr. J, you're so old school, thinking I'm going to bake an apple pie. I'm like, how about a, why don't I make pumpkin? How about level up? Right. So so we, we think it's old fashioned for women to be women and men to be men. So women, women are taking the role of both of both men and women to where now there's really not a need for men. When men do come around, the women are like, I'm not bound down to that. I don't even respect that. What do I need that for? Why would I want to put myself in a position to have less than what I already have now? If I have less now and I'm barely making it, why would I want to marry you and have less than the less that I have? Society's creating this to distort the mindsets and to make men become invisible. We see it in the commercials, H&R Block. Oh, you can't figure it out? It's a box. You can't figure it out? Make, make a mimic, mimicry of men. Yet most world leaders are men, but somehow men are stupid, right? Do we not understand this? Why is it that we find it okay to put men down, but when men stand up for themselves, oh, he's toxic. Well, maybe it's the women that are toxic that need to be sat down and given a little talking to to say, look, this is not appropriate. We cannot say that we love men and then go in a grocery store and bash men all the while and make them appear dumb and stupid. And if you just want his bank account, tell him. So he's at least up front. Like this stuff is, is what's happening all around society and society is pushing it, the degradation of men through many of the TV programs. That men are worth nothing more than, than just a good, a good time in the sack, sex in the city. Uh, what's the other one? The divorce rate, rate went up after a desperate housewives because now the women are trading in their husbands for a younger model and, and, and thinking that that's okay. And there's a new program right now that's actually called um, MILF Manor, which I was not quite certain what a MILF, I, I had to do a little bit of digging to learn some of this stuff because some of this stuff is like, are we for real? 
where, where what they've done is they've taken middle-aged women that, that are looking for somebody to date, but they don't want to date a men their own age. And then they found these men that wanted to date older women, and they put them in a, in a house together so they could date one another. But what nobody knew was that the moms and the sons were in the same house. So the sons are watching their moms go after like their college roommate. Where are the fathers? And some of these young men were mortified by the behaviors of the women, which you wouldn't be if this is what we're looking at. If we're looking at women in their mid-50s that want to date a 20-year-old, we might really want to be examining where we are as a society and what's wrong with the 45 to 55-year-old man. Where are they? I'll tell you where they're at. They're committing suicide because they've been so beat down by society in a society that says that they have no value, that they lost their authority, they lost their identity in Christ, and it's time that we get it back. It's time that we recognize this is not okay. It is not okay for Burger King to put two grown men in a stroller with little bottles and have them be pushed around by a woman and find that that's a good commercial. It doesn't make anybody want to buy a hamburger or ever eat there ever again. Society is moving in a way to, to devalue what men bring to the table. Now, this is separate from the women politicians that, are, that should be arrested in jail for elder abuse of their senile husbands. That's a separate thing. We're looking here at the fact that most of the shootings that are happening in America, the mass shooters, are by men that are on antidepressants. As men are removed from the picture and they're not in the dating pool, then, then there is less room for them to become husbands, which means now we, we have less generations being created to be going forward, which means the enemy's winning. Every, every man that steps out says, no thanks, the women are crazy, I don't want to deal with this. Now we start to see that, that there is something that is lost, that there is no future prophet being, being birthed through the, what would have been. There, are no, there there's, there's no artist. There, there would be no more, no more musicians coming through that. There would be no more, no more chemists or no more anesthesiologists that would be being birthed. Because we're seeing lower birth rates, never mind, get your phones out of your front pockets, men, because it's creating sterility, all designed on purpose. So as men, as men are seeing this, and many men are, we have to recognize what is really happening. The idea of becoming loose in society means that we're losing out. Loose equals lose. Because we're not really going to have anything gained when we are loose as a society. Those that are in traditional marriages and have been in traditional marriage continue to have high, higher fertility rates. But those men that refuse or don't want to commit, they would just want to try it out. They actually have lower, lower rates of fertility, lower expansion of family. Everything is on a decline. So when we start to see the women rise up and become men and they devour the women and the, and the, or the devour the men, there's no place for the men. But in reality, that we're really doing it to one another and we need to stop. Right now in society, 57% of men are not even seeking relationships. 13% are, are, are looking, but 42% admit that all they want is romance, that they're okay going on a, a, an app and finding someone for a night. Yeah, you know, Mrs. Miss Wright, I'm not looking for Mrs. Wright now because, you know, she's probably not out there and they find Miss Wright, but guess what they find Miss Wright now? Guess what they find is that she's not really pleasing she serves a purpose, but then they got to pay and the porn costs less. And then they leave less fulfilled than they were and more deprived. And the women are more hurt by that. So more women then become haters of men. And the men now are worse off than they were. So where do the men go? 50% of men want commitment. But you know what? That's down from 2019 where it was 61% of men want commitment. 35% of women want commitment, and that's down from 38%. Women want to date older men because men their, their age typically are, are not interested, and if they're younger, those men are moving back home with mommy and daddy so they can play video games. And they're really not looking at growing up because growing up isn't what it once meant. So this war against men is to remove men from any and all responsibility and to get them to, to, to devalue every single thing about their existence, every single thing about what God would have for them, and to separate men and to separate women. 
So long as the enemy wins, where men are saying and they're exasperated and they're exhausted that there are no good women, I'm gonna I'm gonna break that curse because there are good women out there. There are beautiful, godly, good women out there. But the enemy also wants to move to keep you from believing that. Our society systematically is designed to remove fathers from the household. I said it back in 2014 on Father's Day that the greatest threat to America is not ISIS and all the other stuff, but the greatest issue in America is fatherlessness. And I will say it again because when there is no father in the home and when we remove God the Father, we have no blueprint. When, when children grow up without a father, the rate, the rate of abortion increases, the rate of premarital sex increases, the rate of prison recidivism rate increases, the rate of crime increases, the rate of every single thing that we don't want in our society increases, and the court systems thrive on removing fathers from the home. And I know far too many men that have dealt with this, where, where they want to give the, the mother, the, the children, regardless of her state, regardless of whether or not she's a capable parent, because then the government can kind of go in and overrule it. Whereas if the man is there, he's the protector, and the enemy does not want the daughters to be protected. He wants men removed. Watch, start watching if you see any TV programs or commercials. You start to see who's removed from society. You start to see the replacement of, of what is happening. That there is no room for certain colors of men in society. Look at the ads, they're all around. They're all telling us a story of what and whom is not valuable. It's not a racist thing. This is a systematic approach to create it. If you fall prey into it, you are not a follower of Yeshua. If you think it's acceptable that we, re we remove people that God created, you need to get on your knees and repent and deal with that spirit of offense. Women are in a place where they don't want to settle. And so if women are bringing on the bacon and frying it in the pan and doing all of these things because they're forced to, then there isn't a need because what would they be provided with and for? The enemy's loving this because as he's able to do this and to create a systematic rejection of men and of women, he wins. God's whole book, this whole Bible is a love story, which is why the enemy hates it so much, because the enemy thrives on hate and division. When you do the math, you see that God is about multiplication and addition, and the enemy is about subtraction and division. This is not a man against woman issue. This is not a, I hate men because men are jerks. No, just the ones you attract. And this is not a, all women are gold diggers. No, just the ones you attract. This is about us individually and collectively coming together to recognize the divide that is being created. And as more men are removing themselves from the date force, the workforce, the dating force, the workforce, they're removed from, from the boardroom and the bedroom, that they, because that they, there's no room, we start to see what we have as a downfall in society. The enemy's capitalizing on that because he's now telling men, and it doesn't matter what, what your rank, rank is or what your title is, because Chris Beck, Navy SEAL, done 13 tours in, in Iraq, Afghanistan, 13 tours, many, many medals, war hero, became a woman because a psychologist in the military said your problem isn't PTSD, isn't that you've had any of these things, or isn't that you've been away from your family. No, your real issue, Chris, is that, you're, is that you really should have been a woman. And that man and all of that fell prey to that. Now he's very outspoken and we pray about these things daily. This was a man, a great man of valor, a man that like a Navy SEAL, he's not, he's not a weak man in the way that you might think weak. Jesus wasn't either, by the way. Many people think that a man soft-spoken is a weakling, that if he's not running around with his muscles popping out and, and a mullet and a wife beater, that maybe he's just weak. However, study Jesus and you'll find, ladies, the true strength of a man, the integrity. So when we see that the enemy's capitalizing on telling men, your problem isn't women, your problem is that you really aren't one, or that you need to be one, well, now there's one less man. There's less seed that would be used for future generations. As more men are turning prey to seeking other men, that's another ploy of the enemy. Then, of course, as 
women mock that and put that down. You start to see that when, when the Bible is written that women are the weaker sex, it doesn't mean that men aren't weak. Women are just weaker than men. But if a man shows any emotion, he's told, oh, well, stop crying. Well, stop yelling at him and maybe he might. So we have a backwards element of society that says that certain things are okay, but according to God's word, that what he created was men and women for relationship. If he can get men and women separated and hating each other, then he wins. If he can get men to say, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm out, well, guess what he's going to do? The enemy's going to do that. And as he can create other life forms on this earth and, and use every other option to create family in, in another way, well, what do I need a man for? I don't want a relationship. I'll just go to a sperm bank. So then even then, now, now we're seeing that our, is it really all that men are good for? It's just their sperm? Is all that women are good for is just having sex? God said, go forth and multiply and replenish the earth. We don't need more lobbyists in government to do that. The way that we do that and transform government would be through creation, not through paying people to do more, de more depraved and deceptive measures. So when we turn and we look and we see, and let me go to, let me see where I want to go. I'm going to go i got a few other scriptures written down. I just want to give you a couple more points here. It's in the book of Matthew 16. We need to really recognize and know how to, how to really stand in the gap for men. 16 starting in 8. Jesus perceived... Okay, so Jesus is recognizing the leaven and the unleaven and the yeast. And they reason among themselves, saying, it is because we've taken no bread. We can't reason among ourselves to think that this is a men against women thing. Which then Jesus perceived and said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have, have brought no bread? Do ye not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it, spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye shall be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? What is being sown all around are deceptive practices. What's being sown all around is only to create discord is only to really remove the fullness of men and the manhood of what... The heck, they're even trying to remove James Bond. I mean, really? Come on, let's not... Do we... Come on. Like, the replacement of men throughout society is something that we cannot allow. We cannot allow men to be so shut up that they have no voice. We cannot allow the women or some men too to become such bullies that they have a right to speak against a man who speaks up. And it is a very challenging place because what happens for men is that as they speak up, then they are shut down even more and brutalized throughout social media in any form or fashion or should be canceled. Even pastors who have said, if only we had more, more women that, that had the class of Melania Trump, well, guess what happened? Oh, they wanted that pastor removed. So we're okay with, with being hags that are, that are fat and terrible and mean and nasty, but when we look at somebody with elegance, we can't have that, we can't even speak to that because that man would be a sexist and a bigot and he should be canceled. Well, no, we need to be taking a look at some of those things and come back to recognize that there is nothing wrong with men that men are necessary and that the enemy is the one trying to remove men and get women in the science and the math, never mind the fact that Jesus taught in parables. You know, start, sit back and look. Jesus was the master of storytelling. The Bible is a story when we start to look at all of, all of what's included in it. So when we really come back and look at the fullness of it, we need to open our eyes. 
We need to open our eyes and see when men are withdrawing, when men are moving away, whether they're 18 or 20. And I deal with this a lot because I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in the college campuses. I see what's happening with my students. I'm inter, I interact with so many students that, that are men that are, are at, we may say, wit's end. They, they don't know what exactly and how exactly to move forward because regardless of what they do, there's no room. Regardless of how they operate, it's not good enough. The enemy wants to isolate the men so he can dominate them and then recreate all of these things. Why is this a big deal? Only fans now and through, through AI and through the chat GT, all of these new creations of technologies, many of the AI creators are now really enjoying it because they're now saying, well, we can do less. We don't need to take as many pictures of our breasts. We can just take one and then we can, we can use all the AI stuff and make more money. So now they're capitalizing on using God's creation to deceptively steal from men and then get mad when men don't like it. So if God can, if, if, if we stand here and we recognize God can move mountains, right? And we recognize that, that as the enemy is trying to recreate femininity and recreate women through all the AI and deceive men, we have to recognize why, ladies, we need to be standing in the gap. Because men, are, men really are in a vulnerable position. It's not to say they're weak, okay? Because being vulnerable and being weak are two very different things. But we need to be standing united. Yes, God, God is there. We recognize this. The enemy isolated Eve, but more so now as, as women and, and she men are moving in, there really is, and understand what I'm going to say, there's becoming less room for real men and there's becoming less room for real women because the movements that we're seeing before us are taking over. The whole class of humanity that God created is being hijacked. We have to see this and not fall prey to it. We cannot allow these thoughts of, of, that we've had in the past of men are weak and they should do this. All of the stuff that we already know. We don't need to entertain that. We need to be thinking good thoughts. We need to be entering into a new time and a new place. We cannot allow the enemy to come in and steal our men any more that we allow the enemy to come in and steal our marriages or God's daughters or God's families. This is a time of war and the war is very, very different. It should be very, very alarming when, when we recognize the, st the statistics of the rate of suicide, the statistics of the rate of drug use, the, st the st st statistics, say that five times real fast, the statistics of men that are removing themselves is something that is alarming. We need to come back to the biblical values and the principles of what God has ordained and stand and move in the direction of that so that we can celebrate the seed that man gave men and the carriers to carry it as, as women and say, not on our watch are we going to allow what the devil hates to destroy us. So I pray that as you begin to see this, that everywhere you go, you begin to see, and you'll begin to really see it as, as your eyes are open. If you happen to be married, listen to your husband. Now, what does that mean? Watch. Men, husbands are starving for their wives' attention. And I know this because I get the calls from the husbands. They are starving for their wives' attentions. I do not know men that like and enjoy pornography when they're married. They're starving for attention because their wives are too busy out there that the men are like, I don't have a role here. I'm better off, it's, it's not cheaper to keep her. We need to be paying attention because this really is an epidemic that we're not even seeing. The destruction of men and women in society is happening and it's not political, it's spiritual. And God will deal with those in those offices that are pushing the destruction of our youth. But this is to destroy any and all hopes of any creation of any future generations. If you look, and this is going to be kind of nasty, but all the seed that, is, that has been sprung about 
that did not go where it should is probably a lot. And I don't want you to have the visual of that. I want you to see it spiritually of what's not occurring. What's not occurring is life. And when the enemy comes in to usurp the authority that God gave man, it's to a downfall of all of us. And so we need to forgive Adam, and we need to forgive Eve. And ladies, if you are in a relationship with a man, he's not perfect. He just isn't. But what he is is probably somebody that loves you more than anybody else will. And if he comes home at night, even if it's late, praise God, he comes home. He might be a little bit raggedy. He may not know how to do all the things. He may not take the trash out. But you know what? When we walk with grace and when we really start paying attention, we come back to, to the foundations of conversation and not all of the we expect and expect and expect. And I recently told someone, I said, look, I said, I, you know, there's a concept of raising the bar and then there's a concept of lowering the bar. And I said, I just put it down. Because what it did is it freed me from having any expectations because now I can walk in the fullness of grace and receive and anything I receive is a blessing. So when I, when I removed all of that, what it did was it just opened up the door for so much to occur. So when we walk in expectations, what it does is it brings it all back to us. When we release that and we can just stand in love, now we can give one another what's necessary to be moving in the fullness. And men, we need to be doing that for women as well. So ladies, if you've ever been hurt by a man, we need to forgive. So that way we can be standing in the gap because if you hate men and you're gonna pray for them, we got a problem. We gotta be standing in the gap because I'm telling you, men need prayer. Men need a lot of prayer. They need a lot of help, especially the men that have chosen to give up their careers to take care of their parents in this time. Men need a lot of prayer, and the enemy is wanting to do everything he can to have women live in resentment of them, and it's harming our society as a whole. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray because this is something that is, is vital to our very existence, to, to the existence of our children and all future generations. And we've got, to, we've, we've got to really be dealing with this stuff so we can walk in unity. Not interested in, he said, she said, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in us being in unison, in full agreement, going forward, standing in the gap, saying not on our watch are we going to lose any more fathers, single men, husbands, uncles, brothers, to any of this stuff. Then we're not having it. That we're going to stand in love and we're going to stand in agreement and we are not going to give the enemy a foothold. Amen. So, Father, today, we know that you created men for a purpose. We know, Father, based on Genesis, that you tell us that, that you created man with the purpose to take care of the garden and all of it is in it. So, Father, today, for women, we stand Father, and for any way that we have projected expectations, blamed, belittled, beguiled, and destroyed men in any way, Father, we repent. Father, we forgive Adam. And Father, we also reject the blame that would continue to be going forward. Father, I ask today that for every woman listen to this, that you fill her heart with grace, that for every woman in a relationship, Father, that, that every, every married woman, let her see her husband in the way that you do. Father, help women to just see the great man that she married and that that man is who you would have for her. Let her see why she fell in love with that man and see that man with new eyes. So, Father, we pray today that women would, would be moving in a new place of grace. Father, today, as we stand for, for stand in the gap for men, we break off the spirit of suicide. Father, we pray for the young men that are suffering from depression. We rebuke depression, overwhelming our young men. 
we call it forth, Father, that, that this that this erosion and these powers and principalities of perversion would 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 be rejected and we, we just dethrone these, Father. We just call it forth that men would have a desire for real women, not sex dolls, not sex toys, not, not pornography, but that women really in all things, Father, are desiring real. So we pray today, Father, we don't judge them for being gross and perverted and shame them. We pray for them, Father, today as they need help. We pray that men, Father, would be, would be standing strong and to stand in that place, Father, that you've called them to without shame, without guilt. We reject, Father, the toxicity and the toxic masculinity. We reject these lies and these burdens, and we just reject canceling men. You created men for a purpose. And so, Father, we pray that men would be men, and we reject, Father, any, any lie that would be told to a man that his problem is that he's not a woman. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We affirm men and the manhood that you created them to have to be today. We thank you today, Father, that your hand is upon every man, every man that is struggling, Father, with any addiction, struggling at his job, struggling with his identity, struggling in his finances, struggling in his marriage. I pray today, Father, that by your Holy Spirit that he's drawn near to you, that there would be a new transformation taking place. I pray, Father, that for every single person that needs some assistance, Father, that there is somebody there, that mighty angels are ministering to them right now, that no longer will we allow the loss of men through suicide on this earth. We are not receiving that. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that the firearms jam, that the, that the pill bottle's empty. We thank you, Father, that the brakes work and that the firearms jam. We thank you, Father. We thank you that there is a perfect place for men in your creation. We thank you, Father, today. That as men take their place in you, that you reveal to them. That you show them the way that there is forgiveness, Father, of, of women by every man who's, been, who's just been brutally beat up by a court system. By, by a government entity. By women, Father, who have taken their money and ran. We pray today, Father, that there would be forgiveness and hearts of men healed so that they can stand and take their rightful place. We thank you, Father, today that we recognize the real enemy is not men and it is not women. We reject, Father, the division that is coming to, to destroy us. We reject that and we thank you, Father, that we will go forth on the earth and multiply. We thank you, Father, today that we come before you with the spirit of grace, with the spirit of love, with the spirit of compassion. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that fathers have a place. The families are being restored. Father, we thank you. We thank you that daughters will grow up to know their fathers and that young boys will know their fathers. So we thank you, Father, for restoring the spirit of integrity and a character of excellence within men. We thank you, Father, today that you protect men from all of the temptations of society, the setups for them to fail. We rebuke these things. And we thank you, Father, that for us women, too, that we can stand in the gap and we can pray for the women that are trying to destroy because they're tools, as the devil, tools of the devil and they don't even know it. So we pray, Father, we pray that every mistress would, would, would be gone and not missed. We pray, Father, for every husband that he would be comfortable in sharing what needs to be shared without fear of judgment or condemnation or rejection or fear of abandonment. We pray today, Father, that, that as we're going forward, that we know that the world and everything in it is different, but we thank you, Father, for men. We thank you, Father, for women, and we thank you for the unity of all of us standing together in love by your word and by your spirit. We praise you, Father, for these things, and we pray them all in your precious and mighty name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. And to God be the glory that we're here, that we can stand in the gap because these are real issues that need to be addressed as we are going forward. And so I pray that as you continue to go forward, that you see that transformation in your own relationships, that you're walking in a new level of love as you are going forth. And the sun is shining. <laughs> the sun just came out and it's a little bit bright, but praise God for all of that. So I pray today that, that you just know, men, how valuable you really are and that you don't give up and you are not defeated. We reject that. That is a lie from the pit of hell. So 
we always pray every single day at the 12 o'clock Central Standard Time Hour. Just dial the number. Go to julieblomministries.org. It's also in the comments below. Just join us. You can say your name, where you're from, or you can just hit mute. We pray every single day. We're body of believers advancing God's kingdom, standing in the gap, loving one another as we go forth. So I invite you to join us. We've been doing it for over seven years, and God is making the way. Enjoy your day today. Stand firm. Tell those in your family how much you love them, how much you honor them, and how much you cherish them, because they need to hear it. So God bless you. I cherish each and every single one of you, and I'm thankful that you even give the time to listen to these messages, and I pray that they really help you to be able to fulfill what it is that God called you for in this time. God bless you till next time. Know I'm praying for you. Know how much you're loved, and I look forward to our next message. Bye, everybody. Stay faithful.